Welcome back, Wald and all, as we're coming into our third game of the day, and we are no closer to knowing who the hell is coming out of this group. I am still Just Oshi. I'm joined in the back rooms of the LEC by Dagda, and we got so much kind of coming in now as we got Unicorns of Love Sex Edition coming up against Nasser. They are currently on the day, the undefeated teams. They took the 1-0s off the start of it, and now they're looking to continue that momentum and get us a 2-0. Yeah, despite Fetty giving me a disapproving stare over my shoulder, I am still very excited. <laughs> Constantly watching. Game. Always watching. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, these have been, like, it's so close to see a, either way. Sorry. It's very close to see how either way this group could break. Like, you could end up with uh, G Go, Team Go, managing to get themselves into a position where they're going to be all good. Um, you are well, they're starting to step up as well after what had been a rough day one for themselves. This could now have like you are well potentially coming out of the group. We could have it go in any which way. Like I am so hyped to see what way this one's yeah, and honestly, this is kind of a, a nice resurgence here for uh, Unicorns of Love Sexy Edition. Like we said, had a great performance in this one here. Nasser as well, kind of proving to be the kryptonite, if you will, of Mavistar Riders. And I think you're sweating just a little bit if you are the uh, the uh, Super League right now. You haven't confirmed anybody into your group just yet, or out of groups just yet. And you're definitely kind of living on your uh, living on a prayer right now as you look towards the kind of last few games. But I mean, for me, it's definitely going to come down to how this game kind of goes, because like we were saying it a little bit, well, I was saying it a little bit in the break, these games are slow. They're, they're long slogs of games that are kind of coming out right now. And it does feel like it is kind of the, whoever makes the least amount of mistakes is coming out on top. And that's the big one. I think this is where you're going to see, like, teams trying to rely on a lot of the veterancy that is already there. Like, when you look towards Team Go and stuff, you've got, like, Takui, who obviously played in Flight Quest and that kind of stuff. Like, you have names that have been around for quite a substantial amount of time, so trying to, like, lend yourself to that. Um, and also then for UOL, right? Like, if you look towards the EMEA Masters, a lot of that squad was in the finals, so they are used to yep. the pressure that comes with that. They used to being able to perform under that pressure. And I think this is where you're going to be looking to see, can they try and live up to that? Whereas when you look towards some of the rosters that haven't quite been able to make it out of the groups before, this is where you have to see if they can try and step up and take that weight on their shoulders and still perform at the highest level. Yeah, absolutely agree. And I think the big thing looking towards kind of the next few kind of things is that where this you know where these teams can kind of bring up because again we can look towards the scandings once more time just kind of get you guys really freshed up on this we've only got ourselves a handful of games left we are still getting ourselves a two and two this is still anybody's game and honestly it could end up being any one of the you know any two of the four teams kind of making it out because like we said it all it comes down to now is that you have two games if you win those two you're very very likely going to the quarterfinals yeah and i mean for Teams like uh, UOL and Master, as we said, you start off at one and two. It is going to be so important for them to try and continue this streak, like use momentum that they picked up, picking up that early win today. Even looking towards like Nasser, who are going up against UOL right now. It was UOL who were able to take them down last time, but God only knows what way this group is going to end up. Yeah, I mean, look, we got it. We got one game at a time, one kind of setup right now. Of course, we're going to have the Unicorns of Love Sexy Edition coming up against Nasser right now. Then we're going to see a pretty big one, in my opinion, Mavistar Riders versus Team Go. That's when this series, you know, then you're starting to see two threes and three twos. That's when there's a divide. Naturally, that's how Matt's works, Dagda, in this group. And that's how, you know, winners and losers and all that jazz. No ties, even though we're in Europe. Um, but again, <laughs> gonna... <laughs> we won't talk about that. <laughs> but, uh, but again, like I'm, I'm just incredibly excited to see how, what happens, how we kind of go around this one. And I do think that Nasser really are putting their best foot forward. And again, kind of both teams who are sitting at one or two at the start of the day, bringing themselves right back up. Yeah, and I think it's been it's been incredibly strong performances as well. Like UOL in the last game, it wasn't a case of that over aggression that we saw from them. They were able to take it calm, bring it back a step and actually play towards the strengths of their composition and even shutting down a lot of the strengths that Team Go were trying to bring into things. Um, and as well, the fact that they were able to do so cleverly keep control over that bottom side of the map. I have a feeling that this is going to be the crux of this game that we go into as well. Because when I'm looking at, again, Squirt, who's been so important at trying to get this guy up and rolling to be the big carry, especially since we're seeing that Whistle just hasn't been able to perform as he as well as he did domestically. It feels like this has kind of been a shift in the progression that we've seen from Nasser to now try and have Squirt be the big damage dealer. 
Absolutely. And look, just to give you some fun maths, if you will, done by our fantastic production, uh, you have a higher than 50% chance. It's more likely that we get tiebreakers today than it is unlikely we get tiebreakers. We have a 43.8% chance of having at least one and 12.5% chance of having three, which doesn't sound that high. But then you remember the possibilities that you have to run through to get three tiebreakers is kind of insane. Yeah, yeah it's, not the, it's not the chance. It's the percentage of scenarios that exist in which yes, this sorry, uh, the percentage this of exists. scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. You, look, we're used to this in the LEC. This happens, the all, the <laughs> this happens all the time. This happens all the time. We have to say this phrase yeah. so consistently. <laughs> I was going to say, you're, you're, well, you're well versed on this. For me in the LPL, we have like this way of breaking tiebreakers. We have this way. We only play one round robin. So even if it comes all the way down, we have head to head. Yeah. There's the LPL, no need for that. In the LPL, it's like, for the love of God, do not give us any more games. We have enough games. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like the LEC, we're like, oh, we can scribble in a few more. But I sure look, you know, we're here. <laughs> I do think, though, um, um, I mean, as this starts to progress, I honestly am trying to figure out like how this ends up panning out because it feels like not only have we seen step ups across multiple different teams, but also it feels like teams are starting to get used to each other, which is kind of mm. insane to think of after it's really only two days, right? But um, you can see that in the last game, trying to go for this early aggression team go weren't really able to get it up and rolling. And as a result, we saw UOL being able to control them significantly better. And I think UOL also kind of learning themselves to not go that aggressive. We're looking at Nasser as well, who have kind of gone, right, we can't rely on these like melee picks that Whistle has been bringing to the table. So let's stick on something that's a little bit more utility in the Nico and then have them be that like follow-up and just allow ourselves to rely on this style for a score. So I think a huge amount of this as we start to see the day unfold is going to be a case of, right, I mean, coming into draft here, do UOL just ban away things like that side immediately from the bottom lane to give much more control to Funky Town? Yeah, absolutely. And look, Funky had a great time on the Zeri in the last game. Definitely looked a lot more controlled. I love the Talia ban coming out here from that side. The guys said, look, Mask, you're a little too good. A little too comfortable on that one. Get rid of it straight off the bat. Like to see them kind of giving them that respect. And again, we're seeing more and more priority coming in here. It's interesting as well. We kind of talked about how Nasser was being able to, you know, utilize that Tristana themselves, but they're just so afraid of leaving it open on that red side. They feel like it has to be a permaban on their own side. Yeah, it's... <sighs> It's kind of strange to see because I'm kind of looking to still think like, do we end up having something like the the Azir come through for Whistle in that role, in that mid lane? Like it was something that worked from domestically. We haven't seen him bring out here at the EMEA Masters, but it may also just be a case of like Nasser think, hey, look, we can't just less like, Whistle try to scale to infinity. We need to have something a little bit more proactive at this stage because they are trying to play so heavily around Scorth in that bottom lane and trying to play for uh, some of these earlier dragons, which is not something that we've actually seen from Nasser quite at all, to be honest, both domestically mm. and even from their day one enemy and masters. So I think it is a case of them trying to switch things up. But with the Maokai taken away, Rumble gone as well, it looks like it's going to be a Sejuani already picked up here. And um, curious if we get something like a, an Ivern or something along those lines here for Typhoon. But it does feel like we've kind of traditionally seen these junglers now defaulting towards the Typhoon. Yeah, and look, kind of, Cad had a great game on the Sejuani last one around. He was able to control the the pace of the game. He was able to kind of dictate where and when the fights were able to happen for him and his team. Very much kind of feeling like that's a comfort pick for him on that setup. Now, Nasser kind of going towards their own kind of setup as well. The Jace is available. They could still go for a little bit of a poke comp here with the Kais and the Jace if they so choose. I would like to see them kind of, you know, maybe look towards uh, a little bit more kind of engaged, but we'll see what they end up working with because, again, still plenty available here early on in the draft. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Whistle play the Jace once domestically, but it just hasn't really featured in the Mia yeah. Masters at all. And even trying to play a poke comp, it just requires so much um, coordination and everything with that. It becomes very difficult, especially with the pressure that's on the teams in this group to try and perform at that level. So I wouldn't be surprised to see, well, yeah, Poppy just falling back towards that. And then on the opposite side, I think you take the Zaya here for Funky, unless he wants to go back towards the Zeri. Um, and there, okay, they're going to take the Azir away from Whistle to make sure he can't get his hands on this. And again, Unicorns of Loves going back to what's worked for them. They're saying, look, we got to get our top lane locked in. Venor just played weak side like a boss. I know that sounds really weird sentence, but it was exactly it. He just kind of made sure that he never died, never gave up too much CS and never gave up too much pressure. Yes, he lost the turret early, but it doesn't really matter at that stage. He got himself up to his thorn mail, got his Icebawn gauntlet before the fight's really kind of built in and never really was punished. And again, it's hard enough to punish him, but he already gets locked in because they left themselves in a bit of a lurch. But now Nasser might say, I was just about to say, let's get rid of the Zaya. Let's get rid of things that can maybe do well for Funky. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Zeri band away as well. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, Zaya, Zeri probably going to 
to be the bands here for Nasser. On the opposite side, it becomes a little bit more interesting. It's probably going to be support bands, just to try and make sure that you can have a little bit of an easier time, since a lot of your AD carries are going to be taken off the board. Um, <clears throat> but it's also a case of, like, do you want to try and limit the Fab Fabulous top lane pool? Like, we know that he's going to try and play a tank, so that could be an option as well, but it looks like it is just going to be trying to get rid of these engaged supports that can work so well with the, the Kai'Sa, Nautilus gone, I'd imagine an Alistair as well. Yeah, honestly, I like that where your thinking is coming from there, trying to get rid of those top lane. But I mean, even if they ban Malphite and Orn, you still have Scion. So there's still plenty yeah. to get. Most of the Scion just have a pretty bad time against the Cassante nowadays, but there is definitely plenty of tanks to kind of take up into that matchup. So I think there's just too many to cover. So they're going to cover off a little bit of an easier one in there in Patch's champion pool. Now Nasser, having banned away those 280 carries, they're almost certainly, you would imagine, going to be picking up their... Uh, support and maybe leaving that poppy is a little bit of a flex kind of surprised to see the diona ban and um, mm. not one like obviously i think patch has played it but i was kind of curious what the end game plan would be because you can now pick the alistair here i think they're trying to force the alistair pick probably from patch so then they can respond with the braum on the opposite side and then you've got a ton of safety there but i'm also like if you want to try and play aggressive into the Kai'Sa, it becomes really, really difficult to do now with that Alistair picked up. Um, unless maybe they decide to go for something like the Rakan, but it's not the best of matchups into the Alistair. Um, so I'm curious exactly what the game plan is. Looks like it will be the, the Velos they're going to fall back to here. Still have that late game scaling for Funky in that bot lane, which is basically what you are going for. If that is the case, I think the Braum is your best bet. Don't have options then to try and deny Ari any sort of engage. A lot of opportunities then to try and just keep this bot lane in a safe measure and slowly scale into the later portion of the game. And I think that is kind of what UL are looking for here. Yeah, that's exactly what they go for. Get the Aphelios, get the Braum, and get themselves what is just generally seen as a safe setup in that bot lane. It does mean, though, I will be looking to see Patch kind of maybe move out of that lane a little bit earlier than the most. We have seen it a couple of times throughout the EME Masters tournament so far that when the support Braum has been picked up, the other support, either on the Rel, the Alistair, or Leona, any kind of hard engage, does tend to kind of move around the map and have a little bit more of an impact. I'm wondering if this could be a Diego angle. Or, oh, never mind. Okay. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> like, you flex the poppy into the top side and maybe you try to look for thinking. something that's a little bit more aggressive in the jungle, but not going to be the case. Instead, they are just going to go fab fabulous. Like, hey, I like rocks. Let me rock. <laughs> that's kind of it. It worked well for them in the last game. Yeah. So I have to see if they can try and do it again. And it, again, it does kind of fall back to, I mean, a different style that we're seeing. Rather than going for these melee mids, like the Yasuo, the Oni, and the, this uh, Silas, they want to try and swap over to. Uh, these more utility focused mid laners. I mean, still damage for Nico and Ari, but definitely more of a set up for Scorth to be that main damage dealer rather than relying on Whistle like they would have in the, the regular sports. Yeah, absolutely. And the one thing I will say, though, that kind of Scorth has over Funky in this particular matchup is when the Malphite or the Ari or everybody, to be perfectly honest, goes in, Scorth can follow very quickly, almost instantly with that, uh, you know, kind of ultimate, the killer instinct. However, if Funky gets caught or has to disengage, he can't really get himself yeah. back into the forefront if he's being kind of pr presented by tanks. So it is going to have, again, what, what has been the, the the par for the course, if you will, for AD carries. It's going to be how they're positioned, how they're able to kind of set their feet down and pull out that DPS because I do feel like both these comps have very, very tanky front lines that are gonna need that AD carry to burn through. Yeah, and I think that's the kind of be the crux of this is like at least for or at least on Nasser's side, they really want Squirt to be that big damage setup and he needs to be the one that's in the lead. Whereas when you look across at UOL though, like their scaling's absurd. Like a Nazir late game with an Aphelios late game, you know exactly what the game plan is here. Even the call opted in for, for Funky. So I think a lot of this is going to be a case of Typhoon, can you get into the spot side? Can you play around patch? And I think that's why you get so much value out of this Braum pick. Like it makes it so difficult to try and follow up on these engages from the Alistair, particularly for Scorth. Like maybe at the level six, when you have access to the Killer Instinct and can get around the shield, it becomes easier. But even then, it's not ideal. No, not ideal, but... We'll see how it goes. Did you learn CAD in uh, in secondary school? No, I didn't do graphic design. You didn't do graphic design? Oh, you didn't do woodwork or metalwork. Either of the two. No, I had to do all the fun subjects that made me use my brain. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean you don't use your brain? For, what do you mean for graphic no, design? You don't me use, use your my brain. brain. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were throwing shade there. Graphic designers, I was like, damn. I mean, no, CAD is... God, yeah. I, I was like, CAD like, is... Like, yeah, it's, it's actually one of the things I regret not doing woodwork or something like actually because I feel like I don't know how to like work with my hands properly because I'd never really learned it and it's something I've always regretted. 
And that's why you're working on the uh, the boulder right now, getting back into the, yeah. the fitness of things. You know, working how how your how your 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 extremities are able to kind of deal with different different holds and whatnot. Yeah, you ever but see then the, I you ever go crazy with like Goberg and with Stracos, and they just put me to absolute shame every single time. Oh yeah, time. <laughs> I, mean, I mean the the thing with bouldering as well is that it also is very much like a, a self weight kind of thing. It's like if you weigh slightly heavier than like you know like than the average climber, it's just gonna be a lot harder. It's like pull ups, you know what I mean? It's like I know a guy who's seventy kilos and can do twenty pull ups, but that's because he's seventy kilos. <laughs> like it's not it's not a lot. <laughs> But anyway, I mean, it's it's not a secret. I'm not 70 kilos. <laughs> what? I'm shocked, shocked to the fall. But hey, someday you're getting back there, man. I mean, I'm not 70 kilos. Trust me, I don't think 70 kilos is a, is a good weight to be at uh, from my height, let alone yours. But uh, look, we can talk about that a different time. We can come back in towards this game and see where this team is going to go. We do expect it to be a pretty damn uneventful first few minutes, even with engages like this. There's just not really a lot you're going to be able to do against the Braum and an Aphelios there. You know, it's just, that's just the way the game goes. You're just going to be able to push them in and eventually the Aphelios feels it all back up with the server. Yeah, the two things I'm going to be watching out for is one is where Typhoon is and two, if he's on bot side, where's Whistle's wave? Because it does feel to me like a huge amount of this is going to be trying to unlock Whistle to go for four-man dives on bot lane to try and punish Funky and um, the Braum here because otherwise you're just not really in the position to snowball this game in the way that you need to as Nasser. Like, pretty much, well, I'm not going to say across the board, but certainly when it comes to carries, like, this, you get outscaled. And if you're just allowing them to get to two and a half to three items without this game really doing very much, you're in a bad spot. And I think Whistle, you can see already, very much aware of it, already starting to try and set up that vision control of this bottom side, or at least get some sort of control of bot end, so then they can set up for that. So what kind of... Shenanigans we do end up having. I like this from Nasser, kind of saying, look, we're a bit stronger for the moment. They will be able to get a fair bit of damage onto that Braum. This is the thing. If you can get that damage down before that Unbreakable comes up, you will win the fights every single time. Funky, though, at level 3, does finally have access to be a champion. And uh, level 1 does feel a bit unfortunate for the Aphelios. But again, you know, a lot of people kind of still seeing the Aphelios around, but he's just not the all-rounder he used to be, as I love how both junglers are basically identical to each other. But Fab Fabulous almost certainly going to be losing his flash here. Here. As Cad tries to maybe guess where he's going to be going there, it's going to be. Arctic Assault does not land, but good gank regardless. Uh, that knockback from Venner could have been a fab fabulous losing his life as well. So just about able to escape away from that one as Venner went wide with the, the knockback. But at least for the moment, you got Nasser good control over this bottom side. Funky, I wasn't sure if Typhoon was going to try and look for some sort of dive since the Braum had been forced to reset. And they knew the Cad was on top side without the vision they had, but it does seem like Typhoon are just going to take it a little bit slower here and make sure they can actually work with um, Whistle when he gets a chance. So Whistle has gone for the reset and just TP back into lane. So maybe they're looking for the level six on him, but in a minute and a half's time where they can then try and look for that push in onto the bottom side. Let's wait. Again, I don't expect there to be much happening until we yeah. hit level sixes <laughs> and really wants this mid lane uh, pushed in here, Whistle. He'd love to get a be a little bit of a cheeky back if he could. Again, just happy to kind of keep pushing it in. But again, look, it's just this is just the nature of the game. Unfortunately for these two teams, they know how much this win can mean when you're sitting at two and two with only two games left. There's only so much you can do, and that's a good ward here highlighted by the observers. Cad has been caught out quite a bit now on his roam, so they know exactly where he's going and where he's been. Yeah, the thing is, it's like yes, you know that Cad is there, but it's not really going to change the game plan at all, right? I think Cad, his game plan is not to actually get a gank off, it's about trying to counter gank. So you can already see that Typhoon has tried to desync where they are on the map, so he wants to be on the opposite side of the map to where Cad is. Got to take the Dragon, because he has that push in bot side, and Whistle just gone for the quick reset in mid. But um, overall, like I think Whistle hasn't been able to get as much damage as he would like to on Mask at these early stages. With Mask has been able to like get control over the mid lane, has managed to get back and get that lost chapter. The fact that he didn't have to blow the TP when Whistle did meant that he was totally fine to just chill out. And now he's going to have access to that recurrent mana that will just allow him to keep pushing out waves and not really worry about Whistle unless Typhoon comes in. But never mind, goes in aggressive. Yeah, look, he said, I heard you talking smack there, Dagda. I can be aggressive. Doesn't mean anything, to be perfectly honest. Does he just, he's <laughs> going to be able to get a whistle going for it. But speaking of aggressive, they're trying to make this one work on the top side. We will see Fab Fabulous not quite level six, but he's so tanky already. Just able to tank up so, so much. They even go aggressive. Venor, oh my lord. And now he has to walk away. That oh, could have very six. easily been a double kill going over to Fab Fabulous as he gets access to the unstoppable force. That was 
very close to the edge there for Venner. The fact that you can see level six hit by Fab Fabulous, if that had come through like a minion or two earlier, that would have been it. So very, very close to going awry. The fact that Fab Fabulous managed to survive as well is huge. He's now in a great little spot where he managed to catch that wave. The a lot burnt by UOL on that top side. And, uh, Whistle still needs to be careful here, though. He's going to be forced to reset. And this is what I'm talking about. Because Mark got the later reset with the TP, he just managed to get a much better buy because you'd seen Whistle back for essentially three starter items, right? Dark Seal, the the Doran's Ring, and also then going for the Corrupting Potion. Like, so much of this is invested in, like, early game focus on the lane. Whereas for Mass, he's like, cool, I'm just going to farm away. I got my lost chapter. You're not going to push me to lane unless you go for some sort of all-in. A Mask with a good Emperor's Divide won the last one. Yeah, this is... Uh... Bit of a curious one here. We are seeing about a 15 or so CS lead in that bot side once this wave gets cleared out. But, I mean, for the moment, neither team able to get a significantly huge advantage. And that's why you're making such a highlight, I suppose, of the, the mass one, because right. it is those small differences that right. make, you can make it up. Braum has left the lane. What? <laughs> why has he left the lane? <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> I don't think it's going to be anything. It's just like, it's the only thing I've got to say. <laughs> I, you know what? That, that is very, very fair. We might see an engage happening around this Rift Herald, but I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. There is a far more of an impact for the uh, the Alistair at level 5 than there is for the Braum. I feel like at level 6, the Braum does feel a little bit better. Typhoon, going to walk into him, the charm comes down. This is exactly what I was just talking about. Some portal combat gives them the first blood, and that's why Braum shouldn't be leaving his lane. Okay. <laughs> I will say, I feel like the leaving the lane wasn't the problem. It was just like face checking on your lonesome when you have no idea where anyone Results is. Results-based analysis. Been. It never fails, man. Like. That is true. That is true. <laughs> um, but, I mean, the result is, Nasser, get the kill. Not really in a position to fully go for the Rift Herald anyway because it's they haven't got enough control there with the Braum gone. So instead, you're just going to see the reset come through. Patch is going to come back. And Cat actually is going to start this one up again because well, Braum has managed to come back in. And you've got the Azir who has that full push. It made even Venner having it on top. So even though Nasser get the kill, this may not be the best time for them to actually... Actually, they're just going to go for mid lane. I'm sorry. They flash on Alistair. That's the thing. They go in, flash in, and yep. Trying to see if he can flash away, but there's just so many people flashing and dashing and constantly in your face. Whistle getting that kill. And yes, they'll give up the Rift Herald, but is it worth two kills? That's when the, the gold advantage you would normally get from that starts to become a little bit less clear as we do see Fab Fabulous being pushed in. He's still fairly tanky. And again, they're just throwing everything at him, but again, it's a Malphite. It doesn't matter. And now the bot side, Funky, trying to see if he can run away from this one, but he can't. And now he's dead. He's trying to see the if he can maybe cleanse away the heal. Oh, that Severum ultimate. The Moonlight Vigil was massive. Just about keeps him alive, but he loses all his summoners. So, and now here's the thing, right? So it gets a little bit murky. Is Nasser still come out when it comes towards the gold, right? But as you can see here, Kata Mask should get the ripped out for the charge in mid. We're losing plates on top side as well. So in the grand scheme of things, UOL actually answered back for a lot of what was invested by Nasser onto that plate. Like two plates gone on top, you got I think it was three gone in mid. So even yeah. in the grand scheme of things, it is working out well for UOL. And when it's this close, and in theory, Nasser is supposed to be the ones with the earlier skating composition, the fact you're keeping it close is a big win for UOL. Like, we'll see it here, right? Mask, beautiful flash. Like, he has barely got time to see the Malphite. He still manages to get it. And um, Brom flashes to the side there to try and get away. But as you say, there's just so many people with so much CC coming their direction. But again, Mask has done such a good job in trading back effectively every time with help bars. There's actually opened up room for UOL to try and make some plays back. And yeah, gives them about a thousand gold lead. Honestly, well, a little bit less than that. They are going to have to get the coal going and a couple more minions. They might be able to kind of crawl that one a little bit further ahead. But Kraken Slayer being finished up here by Scroth means that he knows he's going to be the AD damage. He knows he needs to be able to burn through someone like this Sejuani and this uh, Cassante with as much true damage as he possibly can get his hands on. A lot of members starting to come down to the spot side for the dragon. Curious to see if they want to try and go for some sort of dive, like Patch has the level 6. Still no level 6 available for the Braum, so a brief window where they might be able to make that work. And it looks like that's what Typhoon wants to try and hit. Cad moving down, will be spotted a ton of wards that Nasser have set up on this bottom side. Yeah, but they don't know exactly where he is right now. They have an idea. They don't have a confirmation right now. He dropped down his ward. You do have, finally have the level 6 for the Braum. Glacial Fisher is available. 
We pop a ward over onto Patch to make sure he do, cannot just get a quickly quickie fl hex flash over the wall. And yeah, don't have priority in bot, don't really have priority in mid. You're going to have to give this one up for free. And this cat really wants to go for it, but I was going to say the steadfast presence makes that very, very difficult. So, two dragons here for Nasser. Very well set up. Charm. Not going to lead to anything else after you do have the Leandri's Anguish here available for Mask, but. I mean, he's having a great time here in this mid lane. They can just drop this Rift Herald. Oh, they already did drop that Rift Herald, so they're going to be able to get that next one potentially and just kind of, you know, crack open this mid lane again. Yeah, I think the it's a good call from UOL to not go for the uh, the Dragon. The problem is, though, you need to try and play for a side, but Cad, I'm going to hold on to this point because he's eyeing up Whistle. Uh, this would be difficult to go for. Yeah, you're not going to really be able to gonna go for it. Off the back of that, we are going to see the ultimate burnt though by Whistle. So keeping his flash for the moment and has to use the spirit rush. Fab Fabulous trying to run away from Venner. And honestly, just going to get the ultimate out of him and ultimate away. That's why you picked the Malphite into the Cassante. You may not win the lane, but you're not going to die to him. Yeah, I want to come back to this point though for the Dragon. Because oftentimes when you see teams that want to scale for the lane, like we will give Dragon in favor of gold. But we're not really getting that opportunity. But they are going to try and add to this now on the top side as Fab Fabulous might be in trouble. He might be in trouble, but he dodges away from the Arctic Assaults. And he just kind of constantly... Oh, here Typhoon. Typhoon looking to see if he can make something work. But look, they don't have any damage to really chase this one down. And it's still a Cassante at the end of the day. With or without his ultimate, he is still a threat. Especially with all the displacement. But, I mean, for the moment, this game is getting very, very tight. It's still only... About a, you know, 1,500 or so gold lead in favor of Unicorns, but again, that's two Dragons going over to the TCL number two from Nassar. And I'm going to say it right now, this game, in terms of the four-way ties, means nothing. If, it, if it Nassar wins or Unicorns wins, it does not matter. What matters is who wins after this. So, if you are a fan of three four-way ties in this group and Unicorns win, then you need go uh, Movistar Riders and Nassar, uh, Nassar to win in that order. If you are a Nassar uh, fan and you want it to go the other way, then you need a Bobby Star Riders and Unicorns, but kind of stopped myself. Thought there wasn't going to be any fight. Typhoon turns me wrong. A nice job there from them to pick off the enemy support. The fact that Patch was able to get that CC to set up alongside Scorth is that now they're in a position to take mid. And this is where it does become dangerous because, as you say, two dragons coming across from Nasser. In theory, what UL should have done is traded dragon priority for that top tower and just like shoved mid with Mask and Cad and then gone for a dive onto Fab Fabulous. And that's how you can play for, like, not play for dragons, but play for more gold into your back pockets because that's realistically what the prime representative is trying to do. But because they didn't go for that, now you're in a position where Nasser are keeping you within touching distance of the gold. They're about to come online where you're gonna hit like two items, or well, an item to two items coming in for this uh, third dragon. And as well, you're hitting that at the perfect time for basically your champions across the board. Like Ari loves playing off this one to two item spike. Scorth as well would love to try and finish off some uh, the Navori quick blades before this next dragon. So then he'll be in a good spot. Probably not going to happen with just two minutes left, but you're still going to be very, very strong as Nasser. Whereas for UOL, you're still a long way from being in a position where you can really try and fight because you haven't been able to get this gold onto your cards. Yeah, and I love that you bring up the gold under the carries as well, because yes, they do have about a 2,000 gold lead a little bit underneath it, but it is basically localized into the Cassante, which again, we always talk about the Malphite being such a cheap champion to run. He's very efficient with the gold you give him, and it makes it so much easier then to kind of play that weak side and go, yeah, look, I'm going to lose out on a couple of different waves. I'm going to lose out on a couple of different situations, but I'm not really that bothered by it because I've got my Sunfire Aegis now. I've got position on my map to, you know, to TP and be a, be a, a nuisance, and they're going to turn back here onto Cad. They've got availability to try and maybe burn him down. They don't quite get the stun off here with the push, but I mean, Cad's playing with fire a little bit. He's got to be very, very careful with how far ahead he wants to try and push in by himself. Yeah, I like the idea from Nasser, which was, hey, maybe we can burn something onto Cat before this next dragon comes up and set ourselves up nicely, but might actually burn something onto Venner as well. I thought they were going to go immediately for the Xante, but instead, they know Sejuani is low. They go for the Rift Herald. Yeah, she's going to have to take a camp or two before she can really get into this fight. They know that the Azir is going to have to go bot lane to cover this one. This is just good macro movement coming in here from Nasser. Venor seeing if he can be any kind of a deterrent whatsoever, but honestly, I don't really see this one kind of happening. As I say that, though, we are going to see the Rift Hell confirmed. They did throw out the ultimate and the TP from Mass. We're going to see Whistle having to flash away because he was exhausted. A lot of TPs, a lot of movements. Fab Fabulous may have to use his ultimate if he's not careful. They are going to try and push him away. There's a nice little... Ult into Steadfast Presence combo from Typhoon. Rift Hell goes over, still 16 seconds until Dragon, and it looks like Nasser are gonna have the Honeyfruit to stay here as well. Yeah, UOL 
committed too much. They've burned two ultimates on the mid jungle, and now they don't really have that big engage tool left available. Whereas when you look at the TCL representative, Fab Fabulous, he has the engage. Where is he going for? Oh, Funky used his ult there to try and maybe catch out Fab Fabulous, who didn't even have to use anything. So this is just kind of a weird situation. You find yourself in Charm lands onto the Braum, but he's got the door open. Two people get knocked up, and immediately the Alistair tries to follow in. They all flash away. They get a three-man knockout with the Glacial Fisher as Funky and this Azir start to really rip through them. A flash forward from Venner, but the kill was already confirmed. And that's two swift kills. Finally, Unicorns find their go button. They get themselves on the board. Scorch wasn't really able to follow up on the play, so UOL, despite the fact that it was a good engage from Fab Fabulous and Patch, are actually able to turn it around on, onto, uh, the Nas onto Nasser. You don't have either of the carries locked up in that combo, so UOL are able to free him of Funky having that Inferno, and they actually come out on top. Themselves a dragon, get themselves the kills, they got the mid lane turret, a lot of just gold just got shifted right onto the side of Unicorns of Love. And it's 4,000 now is the lead, and this is where the gap between the Cassante and the Malphite does start to matter. But you can see here, right, like, it's a very messy setup. And at this stage, I'm like, okay, with the charm that comes through from Vistal, this should be Nasser's fight. You get the charm onto the Braum, you get them some good damage down, but... The flash forward here doesn't get onto the carries. They're perfectly safe behind their tanks. And even when you look towards the main damage dealer for an Aster, which is this uh, Kaisa, she's been zoned up by Venner in the back line. She got like a Q up, a second Q there onto Venner, but that's realistically the damage the sports got off. Whereas the Azir and the Felios are free hitting this entire time. So a bit of a miss opportunity for Nasser on the engage because they just couldn't get Squirts into a position that they needed to. Yeah, and again, it was almost a perfect situation there for Funky and Mass because they didn't get hit by the Malphite ult, but they were almost in melee range of him to kind of say, look, it's fine. We can still kind of make this one work. I will say a tower's going to go down. Not quite just yet. It's putting in a lot of damage. Oh, no. Oh, no, Nasser. Oh, no. This is not what you need. This is not what you needed to hap happen, but it is going to end up leading to so much being lost. Patch, you don't even need to lose your flash. You know that you're going to die regardless of what happens, so he's just going to let that one go. They do get a double push, but a turret being kept open for so long just kept putting in shot after shot, and now the Unicorns, they're starting to build control around this map. Yeah, they are trying to see if they can get out to Whistle, but Whistle will be able to escape over that far side. Mid lane tier 2 should fall off the push here for UOL. You're even looking at Mask moving up towards this top side as well to make sure that he can threaten that tier 2. Fab Fabian is still here with Whistle, though. Has an ultimate available if UOL overextends, so maybe spreading themselves a bit thin here as UOL won't be able to get anything but just pushing the waves. And this is Unicorns again, slowly but surely building themselves up their advantages. 5,000 gold nearly in the lead. They've got themselves the mid lane turret, the bane of most teams' existence. As they get themselves three turrets to one, they've got a dragon to stall that one out. 30 seconds till the dragon or the baron spawns. And they're happy with the way this game is going. Like you said, the longer this one goes, the more you tend to look at the Aphelios and the Azir. Yeah, I, this is just a good play here. So you end up with Nasser over committing for the mid lane tower. They don't just kill the tower, which is bizarre here to just like be like, okay, we're not going to worry about this. But then you get the collapse from Bass from Mask Venor as well with the TP in to collapse onto the mid lane. Whistle's not really in a position. Position Sport is the first to die, so that's again the main damage dealer. And this is where Nasser just aren't doing a good enough job to set up this Kaisa to be that big damage tool, or even trying to just look for picks off of Whistle and then having the Kaisa come in over the side. So time and time again, UOL are playing for these big team fights. They know they have just two better damage dealers on their side, and they're able to carry through these fights. <sighs> Wait to see now what Nasser can do to kind of maybe bring back this game. 20 minutes in. They've got plenty of tools available to them, but I mean, this Cassante is getting massive right now. It does feel like they're going to be relying solely on to score to take him down in these fights because just, I mean, who else can stand up to him? Yeah, it's also just the fact that you got two items now for Mask and Funky as well. Uh, Mask even going for the more traditional damage build, having that Nasher's, uh, Nasher's Tooth, so he's going to be taking a lot of consistent damage in these fights. Same when you look towards Funky as well with the Gale Force. Now he can reposition super well away from Malphite if he needs to, or even like have that chase down potential for fights that get away from him. And Mask and Cat actually going to try and just solo off this Baron I mean, they, they as the can. rest of UL are just putting, putting pressure on to say, hey, look, don't look at the Baron, we're still here. 
Yeah, I mean, look, you just used a smite there on Typhoon, so he's not going to have that for at least 15 seconds. Now they can maybe look for a fight, but I think the Baron's already gone. Great Glacial Fisher means it can't really fight for anything else. Often you can see there's the Poppy Copter to try and separate this fight to a 5v4, but I think they've already got themselves a fairly decent position now. Take down one. Can Pax survive on the backside? I don't think he can. That was a weird Vizier wall, but it doesn't matter at the end of the day because the result is still the same. They're caking down absolutely everybody here on the side of Nasser, and there's just nothing they can do. What a great play coming out from Unicorns. A great Baron, great turn, an amazing setup for you, well. And even at the end of that, like, <laughs> Nasser just scattered. You've got Dragon yeah. coming up in 30 seconds, which would be wonderful, but that's not going to be a case for Nasser. It's to be a second Dragon, more or less, for you, well. That's exactly what you needed as the Prime representative. I mean, now at 8,500 gold lead, let's have a look at this fight right now because, I mean, look, they just kind of took too long and the smite, it's like, it's, again, it's a perfect bait. Yeah, they don't realize that they're on it, so you don't want to over-engage here as Nasser, but this was their moment to try and set it up. A great ultimate over the wall from Cat as well, locks up the back of the fight. Funky manages to get the Infernum off, and then Venor diving into the backline to get a ton of damage off. Mask here was actually just in case Fab Fabulous and Whistle decided to try and re-engage as he went forward with that ultimate to try and knock them back, because he just wanted to make sure they could finish off one more. And then Funky managed to just barely get that Gravitum auto, auto onto Fab Fabulous, which then means that he's able to fall as well. This is the Dragon going over. The push is already there in that bottom side as well. I mean, Nasser, it was all riding high off of that extra win they picked up today, but you will well bring them straight back down to me. Here's the thing as well. Give you the scenario for our final three games of the day. If you want to see a three-way or four-team tiebreaker that you need, go to win the next one, Mobby Star Rider to win against Unicorns, and then Nasser to beat Go. That's the situation you're in if you want 3-3 across the board, but we'll have to wait and see because both these teams now you has been big, big win. It's, it, we can't overstate it because it does feel like if you're able to pick up that third win, it just gives you at minimum, minimum it gives you a tiebreaker because how close this series and how this uh, game is. But Mask may have gotten himself caught out. In fact, he did. He's going to use a stopwatch. He's going to be shut down. 800 gold going over to the Kaisa. It isn't the worst thing in the world, but definitely not want to be giving more resources over to that massive late game carry. Yeah, UOL not really in a position to put any pressure down as that's happening as well. You can see the waves are a bit too far away from those inhibitor turrets, so quick pick, but Whistle might be the same. Yeah, I mean, Whistle, we saw this in game number one of the day. He is uh, living up to that in game number two. Again, small little things, but now Typhoon, he might be in a bad situation. The ultimate goes off. Patch doesn't get quite hit, hit by that one, but a double knock up by Venner. And they get the Glacial Fisher down as well. They're just kind of constantly putting him in. This isn't just the tanks putting in damage right now. The Poppy Copter is good. The Flash is decent. They don't get anything else, but a three man ult onto the tanks is nothing. You needed to put that on the Funky Fab Fabulous. And now you will be punished for your hubris and you will be taken out and put away. This could just be the game. Mass TPing into mid. They want to try and crack open the base. Venner is still in the top lane, so I think this is more of a play for both of the inhibs. But a very nice pick onto Whistle. He was immediately gone with the wind, and then the rest of UOL able to catch up to the play. Pick off Fab Fabulous as well. The TP will complete just a bit. Yes. Just about, but he'll get the tower regardless. So Venor gets himself a free TP with his. Uh his tower package. I was trying to think of like some kind of like Supermax combination there, but it just didn't <laughs> quite work out. Some brand safe Supermax combination. But yeah, Whistle, you've no vision, you're caught. Yeah, I mean, just a nice job here. Hiding in the bush, picking off Whistle as he starts to come through. And then as this one goes forward as well, Typhoon, he's in such a horrible spot because you've got the collapse coming in from both sides of you as well. And um, has to flash away, but knock back again from Venner. There's just so much chase down potential on this team at all points in time. It's so hard to get away from. Yeah, and look, this ult is great in any other circumstance that isn't on the three tanks in the, yeah. in the front line. Funky doesn't really have to do anything. Even without his flash, he's just kind of going ground on Gale Force aggressively because I've just got no threat on me. It's a little unfortunate there. You can see just how everyone is ahead on the side of Unicorns of Love Sexy Edition. It's 1,100 or 10,500 gold in their favor. The two item spikes, even getting themselves the Abyssal Mask there for Cad Meigs that these, you know, Azir soldiers, these, uh, you know, kind of Infernum Spits are going to be so ridiculously powerful coming into these AoE team fights. I mean, at the moment, UOL, they've got full control over the top side jungle, starting to lean up towards this top end as well. Patch. It's starting to get some 
shallow vision, but even that's going to be cleared out. The, you have a moment here as Nasser where you could try to engage with Patch on the bottom side, and it looks like that's what they're going to try and take. Yeah, they're looking for Cad. They're going to try and fully commit onto him. They need to try and burn him down as best they can, but he flashes away. And he might be able to get that blast on the Glacial Fisher. Not quite able to keep him alive. That's a oh my god, that was an insane amount of damage. And yeah, Hoppy Copter needs to come out. The judgment has come in. You need to leave. And that was a uh, an insane amount there from the from Funky, who's now a three item Aphelios. Doesn't matter about the early game. He's gotten to the late. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's even when you get down Cad, there's still so much damage that's going to be coming through as well. You will well start to step up, even with the four versus five, which they kind of realize everything in the kitchen sink was thrown by Nasser to try and get that play hap to happen. So. Even with Patch having no flash, they don't really have to be fully worried about some sort of crazy engage happening in the 4v5. So they're going to push out the wave, make sure that they're keeping Nasser in their base. Because the biggest concern was Cad being dead for Baron, but 10 seconds on the Baron, the Sage one of you back up, and Nasser are still stuck in their base and can't really contest. Well, this Baron is going to be taken. That is a fact of life. Water is wet, the sky is blue, and uh, this Baron will be going over to the Unicorn to Love. Last patch wants to cause a miracle, but that sounded like a weird Valentine's Day card, yeah. and I wasn't sure where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're far too late. Sky is blue. Yeah. All you need to I... know is I miss you. Like, so like, uh, you know, uh, I'm like yeah. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going. I was like, I was ready I, for the punchline. <laughs> it's your little sneaky way of saying you missed me. I appreciate it. You know, I see you. I see you, but. Uh, you know what? It's all right. We're, we'll have LPL at Worlds. I'm sure you'll be there as well, and uh, there'll be plenty to come out from that one there. But uh, we'll see what we can do here, because, I mean, Unicorns, they can just keep pushing up here. They've got themselves a Baron. Fab Fabulous is level 14. He is just not going to be able to stand in front of these guys for very much longer. And yeah, they can just fully commit everything, because who's going to stop them? They even have Venor just kind of sitting off to the side. He's still ticking down. Bask is three levels above Fab Fabulous, and he's yeah. just face checking them off like going, it doesn't matter what you do, do your do work. It. I over. dare you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is UOL. They had their time in the sun, and now they want to absolutely obliterate Nazar by throwing them. Yeah, they are trying to just make sure there is absolutely no way in hell they control this one here. Even Patch trying to just stand forward there. Just not really got the protection of his team. And this is the problem when you go with the Poppy as well, that you know, it kind of needs to be aggressive. You need to be that engaged. And they're going to try and look for that engage right now. They're jumping on the backside. Funky goes down. That's a shutdown straight away. Next turn, number one goes down, but can they get Scorp going? He has to flash away as Venner goes hunting, searching for blood. And he has found that of the 80 carry and Nasser. Two kills going over. Let's make it three for the Unicorns. And they are going to go to three and two. They are going to put themselves at top of Group D alone for the moment, but not for long, and they're giving themselves a solid chance at getting back to the quarterfinals. UOL will take down Nasser for the second time in this group, giving themselves that nice little bit of a foothold, and what a commanding and confident way to do it as well. They take these oh, yeah. ears, take the Aphelios, they're like, look, as long as we can play this slow, play this steady, we will get to the position that we're happy, and I mean, they were very happy by the end of that. Oh, absolutely, and look, Unicorns, three and two, very, very different time, you know, setup for them now. They're really happy with the way things are going. They have one more game left to play against Mobby Star Riders. If they win that, that's as simple as that. They're in. There's no other questions to be done. There may be a tiebreaker for them for the uh, top spot, I believe, but that's the only situation that that could happen. So we'll have to wait and see. Now we start to see what kind of look at, you know, looking towards the next game between Go and Mobby Star Riders because that one is going to be such a huge moment now to put yourself right back up there on three and two to continue pushing for that momentum. I mean, Nasser has got to be feeling a bit shaky. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of heartbreaking for the TCL second seed. The fact they were so hopeful coming into the day, they kind of felt like they wiggled their game plan around to play heavily around scores, but they just couldn't get it going in this game. And um, we kind of talked about the opportunities of maybe trying to get hit the level six with whistle, play for bot lane, but not being able to get that kind of coordination going really came back to bite them. And this, you can see it slow and steady, not really a huge amount of pressure coming through from UOL until they kind of hit that position where they're super comfortable. And you can see that slow, steady rise on the post game breakdown. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice hike at a steady elevation. There's nothing too crazy about it. It was very, very, you know, easy, I think is the, a good way to put it, just to kind of see unicorns look for it. And look, 
Nasser had a good opening to start this game. They were 3-0. and They were really making plays to try and, you know, disrupt the tempo that Unicorns obviously like to play into in that late game. But it just really didn't kind of come together. A couple of small mistakes. And that big Baron play really felt like it was the kind of linchpin that meant that, oh, Nasser don't really have the damage to deal with this front line. Yeah, I have to say, though, like, big shout out to, um, to both the mid and the AD carry for UOL here. Like, Mask... Brilliant performance on the Talia, fantastic performance on the Azir here. Like his mechanics were absolutely on point. And as well for Funky, like it constantly getting into the right position, the right time in these team fights to actually set things up. Like UOL, their backline is really doing work in these fights. Yeah, absolutely. And look, we'll see how it ends up all kind of like finishing off, if you will, as we look towards the later time kind of stays in the game. We still have quite a few to go before we end up kind of like, you know, deciding who is going to quarters. And again, that four-way tie is still very much kind of in the mix. We do are going to need some specific ones to happen a particular way, but I'll let you know. Well, I won't let you know. The next task repair will let you know once that ends up kind of happening. But I mean, look, Venner on this Cassante. I mean, I feel like it's kind of become either a ban or, or something you have to deal with in those early. Pick a Gwen, pick something that can actually kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this and punish it because it is starting to become a little bit of an issue and a bit of a kind of, you know, a, 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 a power pick from the side of the Unicorns. Yeah, I think the, the problem is that a lot of the teams we see coming into this have kind of defaulted into the front-to-back team fight um, and then trying to operate in a team that wants to try and play a Gwen or a Jax or even a Camille or something along those lines that can do a little bit better. It changes the whole dynamic of the squad. And we kind of mm. talked about like Nasser kind of needing to rediscover how they want to play the game as a Mia, as they come into a Mia Masters. But trying to do that on the fly is an incredibly tough thing. And I think when you have a pick like this, Cassante, you got to try and take it away. It still provides your front line, but Benner has been such a great player on this pick. It needs to be shut down somehow. Yeah, maybe I'm just so used to some of the best top laners in the world taking those matchups. But that is all we got for this particular game. We're going to send it to a break. When we return, it won't be us, but it will be initialized with Nymera to round out the day.